Hello, my beautiful creative friends. How's everyone doing? This is Allison, the Caffeinated Creative. I love everything planners, journals, and in this regard, Hobonichi. <laughs> so if you're new, welcome. Um, and if you're returning, welcome back. Today I thought I would do like a quick chat because it is Hobonichi season and I'm loving every minute of it. I love watching the hauls and all that good stuff, but I thought that it might be sort of fun, interesting, relevant to talk about my love affair, the ups and downs of um, my experience with Hobonichi, how I've used it in the past, and what has worked for me, what hasn't worked for me, and just like any insight that I can share for someone who might just be starting out or who might not be sure what they want to do in 2023 or even in 22. So the reason why you see me holding these guys is because these are my first foray into memory keeping slash gratitude slash creative journaling in a Hobonichi A6. And this started in 2020, which was a very interesting time, you know, year, I shall say, to start this. This was the whole first half. Um, I totally kept up with it. I loved it. And it was a super joy, especially during a very hard year. And then this was the second half. So uh, I packed this these A6s to the gills but i loved it um and it really got me interested in a new way of planning and thinking about creativity so that was 2020 and then in 2021 i switched to the cousin which all of this is on my channel but you know i don't expect you to go back and watch years and years of videos but with the cousin, I got more real estate. I really enjoyed it. And I was able to keep up with it for both halves of 2021. So this is the this is 2021. Now, I did find it difficult towards the end. Um, I did feel like a little sense of obligation around it, but for the most part, I tons and tons of joy successes. Okay. So 2020, 2021 memory keeping. Now, the other way that I've been successful with Hobonichi and still do, or still am, I should say, is as a very, very functional tool. Now, I can't flip through much of this for you because it's filled with all things related to my job, but I use the Hobonichi Techo full year cousin for work. And I'm going to flip it just like this. There's very little decoration. It's basically just black and yellow highlighter and ink to do cross off to do. Um, the reason why I wanted to sort of share that with you is because I think, especially as we engage with social media around Hobonichi, everything is gorgeous. Everything is very aesthetic. Um, everything it seems very organized which is great right obviously it's a planner people who gravitate towards Hobonichi are planners for the most part or at least creative they appreciate beautiful and productive things but I just want to share with you that half of my Hobonichi life is very very functional and I don't mind at all spending a good amount of money to have something that will serve me every single day just as a tool um, this cover, in case you're wondering, is from Christina's Leather, and um, I really, really love it. I love that there's pens here, so I always have a pen when I take this off to meetings or whatever. So, functional, functional, functional. And I've been using the Hobonichi like this for work for the past two years. So, very functional, creative. Now, I also want to share with you fails. The reality is, is that I have been ambitious around my ability to keep up with journals, pure and simple. I love the idea of a journal and I can get carried away. So I want to share with you some fails, <laughs> um, just in case you have them too. And I don't want anyone to think that they're like alone in having a half filled Hobonichi or any journal or planner for that for that um, matter. So this was a failed A6 of Eck that I was going to use in 2021 as an overflow of like memory keeping. Like I just thought that I would want to memory keep like all day, every day. Um, so it didn't get used, 
But what I did do was I repurposed it. So I just turned it into like a regular journal. Um, I'm not going to flip through all of it because, it, you know, I, I will use this for thoughts and things that aren't necessarily what I want the whole world to be able to read. But um, I basically just got for um, ignored the dates, especially towards the end, and used it as a journal. So I love this because it also reminds me that if I do buy something that I wind up not using, I can use it and just ignore the dates. Like, I can handle that, and that's good to know. But this was technically a fail because I didn't use it for its intended purpose. My next fail, <laughs> it's not really a fail. Well, I guess it is a fail. So last year, 2022, I bought Cousin of X in order to do the memory keeping in that larger size again. Um, but as many of you know, I was not able to keep up with it. Um, which is okay. This was a very eventful half of the year. I accomplished a huge goal that I've been working on for over seven years. So it's okay. I'm not beating myself up about it. I guess there's part of me that still wants to, to go back. I don't know how long I let myself believe that'll happen, but um, this was like a, a beginning to what one might now call a fail, which is the cousin of Beck for the second half of the year. I have not even cracked this baby open once. Um, so there it is, right? Like I have a cousin, we're in September and I haven't even used it. So I will say that's a fail. I, I didn't need to necessarily buy this. Um, although I did use the first half of the year, so I don't know. I guess it depends on how you think about it. Um, the other fail that I will share with you is this guy, my Hobony Each Weeks. Now, when I first started out with Hobonichi, I was pretty much exclusively a weeks person and I used it as an everyday carry. And then I kind of went down the rabbit hole of different planners and systems as one does when they are introduced to this community, I feel. But last year I bought this mega, I think this is a mega, mega sneaker, <laughs> um, because I thought, okay, this will be perfect. First of all, I love the color. Let's be real. I really just wanted this color. So I was like, what can I possibly do to justify this purchase? And <laughs> I decided to make this a health planner. And I did use it. And, you know, it's not like I've never, ever, ever used it. But if you look at any time currently, I haven't used it in a long time. I haven't used it for some time. So... Is this a fail? I'm not sure. I think it's too early to say. I might pick it back up. I did use it, you know, here and there. But was it the best purchase I've ever made? Also, no. So, quasi fail. <laughs> um, the other thing that I might consider a fail, again, I was very ambitious last year. Um, but I bought a cousin, a yearly cousin for personal development. Um... So I, I did this on camera. This were, these were my goals for the year. And I would literally like do all this stuff every single day um, for a good chunk of the year. And then I just completely fell off of it. So now I use it as kind of like a to-do list at home or more of like a notebook. But I really did not keep up with this at all. So probably didn't need to do that. Do I regret it? No. Because I did use it for at least a chunk of the year. But was it the best money I've ever spent? Also no. That's okay. So then I wanted to show covers. I don't see these as fails, but you know, I do have covers that I don't necessarily use that I, I spent good money on that are not always in use, which is okay. Um, another fail, <laughs> man, my fail list is kind of long. Um, this was in 2021. I bought an original spring to do daily journaling and I didn't do it at all. Um, I was using it like this to do like to do's and gratitude and this worked for me for a bit, but it didn't, I didn't stick with it. But now I do still use it as sort of a place to create collage fodder um, like this and then I'll, I'll um, use it as a background. And so I am still using it, but again, not exactly perfect in terms of intended use. And then last but not least, which might be my biggest fail, but also might be my, my biggest redemption at some point, was the five-year. In 2021, I bought a five-year. Um, I was really crazy about Hobo last year. I think I just also 
you know, had been stuck in the house for like a year or so. I overthought. Um, I was overly ambitious about what I could realistically do, but I did not keep up with this. And um, I keep thinking I might pick it back up, but I haven't done it. So I don't know if I'm a five year uh, daily journaly type of person. I see James Burks and I'm just like, wow, that's gorgeous. That's amazing. That's like a, a heirloom treasure. And yeah, I don't crack mine open. So that's that. Um, I also have a bunch of weeks, like I said, but I'm not going to share them here because they're just very functional with some stickers, but I, they were everyday carry. So just to-do lists, but I don't use weeks anymore. What do I use now? That is the question. So what have I learned? What do I use now? Um, one thing I use now is it, this is just a plain undated notebook that I use as a journal. Um, I'm not going to buy another one until I use some of my unused <laughs> um, dated journals. So just like I kind of showed you that journal that had the decoration and I just ignored the dates. Once I get through this notebook, again, as more of just a journal, thoughts and feelings, I will transition and try to use up some of those that I didn't use. Um, but I am using that. Um, the other thing I'm using, well, you saw my work, my work, um, Hobonichi, but I'm back in the A6 size for daily creative journaling and I am loving it. I really am again. Um, I think this might be the size that's, that I can actually handle when we're not at home all the time, if that makes sense. Um, I work full time. I work out of the house most of the time. I don't, I just I have to be conservative about my time and I don't want my journaling to become a source of stress. And that's what was happening when I had the cousin. So that's why I decided to set aside the cousin. I got an Avec A6. I started it in July and it has been super, super joyful, which I've done flips for. I'll do more flips for and journal with me, etc. So this is currently in use in A6 creative memory keeping journal. Now we're on to what do I use now? These are not Hobonichis. So this is my everyday carry. I use it as a wallet and I use it as a way to stay organized. This is just a standard life term. I think that's what it's called. 1917. I can never say it. I'm terrible at saying everything. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but the reason why I like it is it is hard. So it's easier to write on on the go. It's also literally a bullet journal. So what I do now, um, I'll flip this to so you can see it is in terms of planning, I have a, um, I just kind of draw out like sort of a similar layout to the weeks. I do my to-do lists here. And then what I love about this is like, as I get ideas or we'll just want to talk through things like fall stuff to do, salad ideas. Um, what's on this one? Uh, yeah, other things. Um, even like my budget, all this stuff, I can just put it in here. So this is just proof that you don't have to say to the Hobonichi if it doesn't work for you. Um, I really like, the, like I said, the hardcover when it comes to an everyday carry small and I can write and sort of brain dump wherever I am. This is a Coeco sport. I love it. <laughs> um, it fits perfectly with this Christina's leather cover, which I'm going to um, change out soon. When I'm done with this um, journal, I'm going to switch to a different color and it's going to be exciting. Very folly. I'll share it maybe if you want to see it. And then last but not least, um, memory keeping. So being in the A6, you know, I love the creative part. It's it's just a therapy for me, to be honest. So the A6 is amazing, but it's also pretty small, you know, and it's like when I'm in the mood, the A6 is too small, but when I'm not, the, the cousin is too big. So what I've been doing lately is I actually have a different journal that I just called my just good stuff journal. Um, I started this in, in this, this month and basically the good stuff that I really want to remember when I feel very creative or when I just kind of want to like have fun, I use in this journal and um, I've been really enjoying it. It's completely undated. There's no pressure here. I can literally anything that I feel is, a, is good stuff, I can put in this journal. And this journal is a, I think I wrote it 
down on the back, did I? No, I didn't. Um, gosh, I forgot what it's called, but I will put it in the description because this is Tomoe River Paper. I got this idea from Heart Museums with Crystal. She suggested these journals. I got them on Amazon for, I think it was like maybe 20 bucks for two. The other thing I really like about it is it's like small and manageable. I really find it satisfying to finish a journal. And also this gives me tons of space to chunk it up. I don't have to worry about it becoming like huge, 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 you know, like the half years become. So what is that all to say? What is the moral of this, this chat? Don't feel pressure to make your Hobonichi because it is an expensive purchase, right? Like we're spending money more than we would if we were just buying like a legal sheet of paper or um, something like that. They're not cheap, but you're worth it. And this is where I've come to peace with it. I believe that I, even if I have fails, which you've saw many of my fails, I don't, I try very hard to not feel guilty about them because even if I only use them for a quarter of the year or half the year, or I didn't use them at all, or I had to buy something else, that's okay. I change and my needs are going to change. But I know I love Hobonichi. I really love Hobonichi as a brand, as a product. And so, oh, it's okay. I buy clothes I don't use all the time. I have a big, huge winter coat that I only use for like four to five months out of the year, if I'm lucky. So do I feel guilty about that? No, I feel fine about that. So I think the reason why I wanted to share this is because it has taken me a while to, to be okay with it. Um, there have been points where I've felt really guilty that I wasn't using all especially the Hobonichis, as I intended when I purchased them. Um, now I don't feel like that. I, I've released that sort of pressure that I put on myself when it comes to journaling and being creative and, and just keeping my life together and all the things that I use Hobonichi for. Last but certainly not least, why do I love Hobonichi? Um, and my giveaway, the community post will be either now or... I'm basically going to put who won the giveaway in conjunction with um, releasing this video. And I've loved hearing all the responses. I'm actually going to take some time to read through them all and I'll probably do a good stuff journal entry about it because I love hearing other people who love what I love, right? Um, that's why I have this channel. It's just to connect. Um, so thank you to everyone who commented. But I thought I would answer the question as well. So the three reasons why I love Hobonichi is, to be honest with you, the fact that it's neutral. I love that the pages are basically neutral and a blank slate. I've used other planners that were far less neutral and I spent most of the time trying to just get them to neutral. <laughs> so I love that. Um, I also love the paper. I mean, you know, you know, right? The paper is just incredible. The fact that you can watercolor and, you know, do tip-ins and pictures and everything and still it remains intact and relatively compact is just magic to me. I love it. Um, but last but not least is the re I love the Hobonichi brand because of basically their philosophy that every day is important and that the little things are the big things. And I think it really took me doing this type of exercise where I <laughs> spent a lot of time um, gluing stuff down and, and coloring and, and buying stickers and, you know, all that kind of stuff. It really has taken me this practice to understand that because like now I look back and I see, you know, almost like a before and after, right? So if this is the before of a cousin, before life, is involved right and this is the after where i am celebrating my life and my experiences like that's powerful and i don't think that i've ever been in tuned with that until i started this hobonichi joy and does it have to be Hobonichi? Absolutely not. It could be anything. It could be any any type of like way that you sort of 
remind yourself how much you've been through, how much you've done, how much you've achieved, and how much fun you've had. Um, and I just really, really value a product that helps me do that so well. So that's my Hobonichi, my Hobonichi uh, evolution. <laughs> um, thank you for being here and thanks for still listening. Um, like, of course, subscribe. If you're not, that would be amazing. It does keep me motivated to do these types of fun things. But more than anything, have fun with it. I hope you get to be creative soon. And let me know what you think. How does this all resonate with you? Is there anything that stood out? Is there anything that you disagree with? Um, let's talk. All right. See you next time. Bye.